Platoon. It's Saturday morning. It's 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and you know what that means. It's time for Saturday morning cereals. As always, Platoon, I'm your host, Captain Cartoon, bringing you the best in Saturday mornings and more. As always, Saturday morning cereals is brought to you by RU Game, the best couple of collectible video game toy Magic Shop located at 124 North Sunset Drive, Pickle, Ohio, 45356. And before I get into this, I got into it last night. I want to tell you all right now, thank you. Thank you all. Um, I apologize again for not having a new episode last week. I've uh, been fighting being sick. Um, I'm about 90% over it. Still got the cough. Will not go away. Um, but I want to thank each and every one of you that reached out to me that, you know, all the wishes and, and, and all that stuff. I appreciate it. I do. It means the world to me that know that you guys care. Um, it does. Um, I'm going to, it's get a little, little sad here, but thank you. Thank you all. I mean, it's, it, it, it. Made me feel good inside. Um, I appreciate it. I really do. Every one of you. Um, you know, uh, I'm not going to lie. Um, probably one of the longest times I've ever been sick in my entire life. Um, although I never was really sick sick. I just couldn't stop coughing. Couldn't stop sneezing. Uh, just couldn't talk one day. Uh, barely, you know. But here I am. Um, so I'm going to bring to you this week, uh, not gonna lie, no rhyme or reason to this week, uh, mixed it up, brought some stuff I had last week, some stuff I haven't aired in a while, you name it, bringing it back. So I think we're going to start this week off with one I haven't aired in a while. I go back here and look at my notes. Cause that's what they're here for. Uh, eh, eh, not, not for a while. Um, some journey to the center of the earth. <clears throat> Episode six. Um, you know, I, I missed this cartoon when it came out, and now I really enjoy it. It's a, it's a fun cartoon. Um, we're, we're going to work with something, you know, later. But like I said, no real rhyme or reason to this week's episode. Um, I did air stuff that I normally air in a row. Like, you know, we got Journey. X will be Fantastic Voyage. But I want you guys to enjoy Journey to the Center of the Earth. This is episode six. Enjoy. A lone explorer named Arnie Sacknusson made a fantastic descent to the fabled lost kingdom of Atlantis at the Earth's core. After many centuries, his trail was discovered. First by me. Professor Oliver Lindenbrook, my niece Cindy, student Alec McEwen, our guide Lars, and his duck Gertrude. But we were not alone. The evil Count Sacknusen, last descendant of the once noble Sacknusen family, had followed us to claim the center of the earth for his power mad schemes. He ordered his brute like servant Tord to destroy our party. The plan backfired, sealing the entrance forever. And so for us began a desperate race to the Earth's core to learn the secret of the way back. This is the story of our new journey to the center of the Earth. This just not a blind alley, Professor Lindenbrook. We'll never get to the center of the Earth this way. A quake! Cindy, Alec, against this rock! The whole world must be shaking! Look! Well, perhaps we can thank the quake for a new trail. But it's 
so cold in here. It's positively icy. Look. An ice age graveyard. It, it looks like a Tyrannosaurus Rex from the Cretaceous period. You mean that period up on the surface? This frozen plant looks like it originally came from the surface, Alec. Tremendous cavern. A mine, I think. They're mining ice. Our supply is still too low. We need more than just these chips. A huge mass of ice that will keep our temperatures livable. For temperature control. This time, speed the chipper beam so that the fall of ice is worthwhile. Advanced enough to have a sound device capable of drilling that hole and tapping some remote ice pocket. But why do they want it so cold? Look at their color. Blue. They must be cold-blooded creatures. Somehow, I think the sooner we get out of here, the better. We'll get some wind damage, Chief Ock. If a really big one falls, it'll push a gale before it. If only the rocks had stayed cold, things would stay livable. Heat is like an enemy. Everything warm is our enemy. Our warm skins would condemn us here. We'd better get out of here. Sir, I think there's a trail opening over there. But Alec, we'll be right out in plain sight if we try to reach it. Plain sight, Cindy, but our chances may be good. Up there, they'll all be looking up. Me and Gertrude is ready. Just a little farther, Cindy. Believe it or not, now I'm not shivery cold. I'm shivery scared. Gertrude, no! Come back! Oh, golly, Gertrude! Please, Gertrude, don't show up. You're flying now. They will see you, Gertrude. Did you hear a strange sound, Marta? Aye, <whistles> a strange sound. <laughs> Perhaps it was the machine. <whistles> oh, get in here out of sight, you silly cracker. Now, let's get out of here. Ah, oh, we're going to have easy going for a while. Professor, Want to look at this thing I picked up back there? Must have been frozen to big ice they bring down. But Lars, I've seen that emblem, the pattern before, in the museum. It's a Viking symbol. This means they must be chipping ice from the glaciers of Norway. Oh no, the quakes, they'll hit the cities of Europe. We've got to stop that machine immediately, or millions of people on the surface will die. Sir, those cold cookies up there might start the casualty list with us. We'll have to take our chances. The wind! There's ice on the way! <laughs> Draw back the machine, quickly! You, up there! Rock! 
cyclone. I'm sure I saw figures escape before the impact, Majesty. Their escape may be short-lived. I... I think I'm all right, Lars. <laughs> You two go. Stop that machine. We'll try to talk to them. But, sir! Yeah, Professor is right, boy. We help them better this way. <laughs> Hello. I am Professor Oliver Lindenbrook. And this is my niece. You are warm-blooded beings. Follow me. Chief Ark, in the ice from above, another of the great frozen beasts. From the Triassic and Jurassic periods, the terrible Allosaurus. Away now. Your warm skins will melt the ice. We saw another beast frozen in a cave. Where did they come from? From the upper world of long ago. They will remain frozen as long as we preserve the cold that is life to us. But death to heat-hungry beings like you. We mean you no harm. We just happened to drop in on you, honest. We're searching for the trail to the center of the Earth. As a scientist, I'm concerned about the effects of your ice mining, the tremendous impacts. Mere shakes. But the vibrations are cracking the ice in the caves. You'll release the monsters there. Ha! <laughs> Dead monsters cannot live again. But if they were frozen quickly, they may just be in suspended animation. In our frozen lands, there will never be the warmth to revive them. And this one will be crushed by our next fall of ice. But the vibrations Millions will be killed by quakes in the world above. There must be other ways to get ice. Move your machine, and I'm sure we can find an ice pocket in the Earth nearby. We cannot waste time worrying about other worlds. Here after us. 
The Firebird's gone into one of the caves. Sir, we can hold them off with water and maybe get the Firebird in the bargain. Lars, if there are tools there, quickly, we need them. Yeah. Hurry, they're coming. Before you can tunnel away, even with the chipper beam. Please, we must have time. You don't realize how many lives are at stake. We cannot live without more ice. Soon, get timbers, boulders. They shall not use our river against us. <laughs> This is the control. Oh, I hope it gets through to another cavern. Fast! Oh, finds another ice area. We must divert the river off the trail so we can pass. Get these boulders into place. Lars, we've got to stop them. They've got boulders? I give them good one. to hurry up! Soon I run out of boulders! I'll tell him! <laughs> Sir, we can't hold him back much longer! I hope you're close to a breakthrough because we're going to need it, and quick! No more rocks! You get your ice! I left Alec and Cindy with the machine. Figured I could help better here. Yeah, now I'm down to pitching icicles. We are having life or death showdown, sir. How is that machine for plain self-defense? It only disintegrates hard materials, like stone and ice. Oh, the firebird returns! Professor, look at Monster! They do come alive! Of suspended animation. You must die! Just lead them up to those helpless people. There's nothing to stop these monsters. Unless it's us. Uncle Oliver, run! He knows they just follow. They do! He's bringing them upon us! Stop him! Stop them all! against these giants? We need the 
sound beam to cut away the trail beneath them. Hurry! Lars and I will try to delay them. Delay? I figure we got to fight these big lizards. We left the chipper beam on. Your men can swing it back into position in no time. It will be too late for them. Look! Wowee! Uncle Oliver was right. There's a king-size ice pocket. All the ice in creation will not help us now, unless this idea works also. magnesium I've been hoarding for an emergency. If this not one big emergency, I don't know what is. But what's this magnesium? A powdered metal that burns in moisture. That's the answer. Here's what makes the draft, Professor. We made a new open doorway. See? It's tunneled to somewhere. Yes. Perhaps the trail to... To the center of the Earth? <laughs> well, there's only one way to find out. And now watch these exciting scenes from future episodes of the all-new Journey to the Center of the Earth.
now continue with Turbo Team. Somewhere out there, someone needs oh! high-class Hudson's earning lessons for people. When Jenny Milligan wanted to earn some money, she tried doing some of the jobs her friends liked. But babysitting frazzled her. Mowing lawns was an uphill battle, and she was allergic to weeding. High-class Hudson! To find a job you really like to do, do something you really like. Huh? Make a list of all the things you enjoy, things you're good at, hobbies you like, even if some of them seem a little far out. Then see if you can spot some ways to earn money in your list. Um, I'm a good swimmer. Why not become qualified to teach swimming to younger kids? Art is my hobby. Advertise a painting service, mailboxes, fences, t-shirts. I get it. Turn something you like to do into a job you really like. You're right on the money. <laughs> I like dogs. Jenny's dog walking service. Your pet is my project. What's happening in the cabbage patch? Puppies and kitties with crimp and curl hair. Six lovable pets. A style here and there. We're going to break your tail, frisky. Crimp and curl pets. Each sold separately. <laughs> Let's get styling now. Something hip blue in the town spray art with a blast of air. It's the Color Blaster! Pump, 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 spray! Blast away! Extra pens and stencils sold separately. Color Blaster! It's a blast! Kitty Surprise is hiding! Look, she has baby kitty! Surprise, surprise, it's Kitty Surprise! How many kitties are there in time? Three baby kitties! They're all so cute! It could be three or four or five! I love Kitty! Surprise, surprise, it's Kitty Surprise! Four kitties! With beautiful baby kitties! Kitty's all different. Surprise, surprise, it's kitty surprise. Kitty surprise comes with three, four, five baby kitties. One in four comes with four or five. Each sold separately. Hey, hope you're still liking uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth. Um, we're gonna keep it going with the filmation and that genre. So we're going with Fantastic Voyage. <coughs> <coughs> See, I told you it's not completely gone. And this is Gone Today, Here Tomorrow. This is episode seven. Uh, Funimation. Or not Funimation, Filmation. I get Funimation is the anime, Filmation is the animated. Uh, I always, for some reason, I always get those two backwards. So, uh, Filmation brought you both Journey and Fantastic Voyage. Um, so here you guys go. This is episode seven. Gone today, here tomorrow. Enjoy. Headquarters. CMDF, Combined Miniature Defense Force. Project Fantastic Voyage. Process. Miniaturization. Authority. Top secret. Highest clearance. Team. Jonathan Kidd. Commander. Guru. Master of mysterious powers. Erica Lane. Doctor. Biologist. Busby Birdwell. Scientist. Inventor. Builder of the Voyager. Mission. In their miniaturized form to combat the unseen, unsuspected enemies of freedom. Time limit, 12 hours. Coming in now, Professor. Prepare for enlargement. Ah! Erica! Stop the machine! Quickly! Kid! What's going on? What's wrong? Hang on, Erica! I'll get it! Hey! Cut that out! Doc! Wait, Mr. Kid! He is only trying to be friendly! Would someone please tell me what's going on? That's what I'd like to know. That makes three of us. 
You say you were attacked by this stuffed panda bear? That's right, sir. Maybe it was an enemy agent disguised as a panda bear. Well, that's the silliest idea I've ever heard. Well, have you got a better one? Hey, wait a second! Watch! What's this, Busby? That bear was one of the things we used to test the machine the time it broke down. Now, watch what happens. It has vanished. Yeah, right into thin air. We could never figure out what happened to it. There were some other objects, too. Right. There was a toy fire truck, some Mexican jumping beans, and a set of rubber Indians. Jumping beans? Rubber Indians? At least, now we know what to buy Mr. Birdwell for his birthday. Just a second. That panda bear was Erica's. Oh, that's right, I forgot. And the fire engine was Kid's. Oh, uh, it was just, uh, you know... Uh... And Professor Carter provided the jumping beans. Perhaps we should change the name of this organization to the Children's Miniaturization Defense Force. Very funny. That's enough joking. Wherever these things were, they seem to have come back. And to be alive. They've got to be rounded up before they interfere with a serious mission. Oh, we'll get them. And we won't need Guru. That's right. No man knows today what he will need tomorrow, Mr. Kidd. I wish you good luck. We won't need that either. Prepare to miniaturize. <laughs> Okay, Busby, let's go. There's something there. What's that, Busby? It's the street for your fire engine set, you remember? Oh, yeah. Well, let's put out the fire. I don't see it. Let's land. It must... What's that? Oh, my gosh! Jump! Hey! What the... <coughs> hey! <laughs> <laughs> now that's what I call funny. <laughs> well, I don't. I'm just as glad Guru didn't see us. So am I. I've got a feeling these toys have decided to play with us. Uh-oh, here it comes again. I'll take care of it. You go get the others. Hurry. There he is. He made it. Okay. Now let's us get rolling. There's something over there. It's the jumping beam. Get ready, Erica. Okay, Busby. Open it up. Don't get too uh, jumpy now. <laughs> <laughs> This'll be a snap. <laughs> Anybody home? I guess not. Dum de dum de de de. Ah! I'm 
Vidshot! Engines! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah! Oh, oh, oh! of them to stand still for me. Sneaky things. I'll get you, don't worry. Steady now. Don't move. Will you hold still? What kind of trick this is? Now! Got it! But why didn't it jump? Say, maybe my voice can command them. Come here immediately. I command you. See you stop me. Whoa! Why didn't I get off when I had the chance? Got to call someone. Must get. I'm here, Professor. Oh, thank goodness. You've got to do something, Guru. They're in trouble, all of them. Perhaps the toys prove to be more work than free. Prepare for miniaturization. Immediately. You'd better find them fast. They've only got six hours left. Start process. <laughs> Help! Help! Oh, it's no use. No one will ever find me in here. Imagine getting outsmarted by a bunch of jumping beans. It's embarrassing. Well, I'd better... Ah! Ah! Guru! Thank goodness, get me out of here! I shall try, Miss Lane. Why didn't I think of that? Come on, let's find Busby. <laughs> <laughs> the 
This is no joke anymore. I gotta get out of here. That horse, there's my chance. Yeah! hi yo Birdwell! <laughs> That's the last straw. Here, Erica, somebody, where are you? <laughs> it looks like Buffalo Busby isn't doing so well. Help him, Guru. I shall try. So that's it. It's about time. Did you have a good play, Mr. Birdwell? Oh, very funny. Let's get out of here. Where's Kid? Getting dizzy. Everything going around. Can't hold on. What happened? How did I get here? You can thank Guru. Without him, we'd all have been goners. I wouldn't mind being gone right now. We haven't got much time. Right. Let's grab that truck and get moving. Keep after it, Busby. It'll run down soon. Right. What's that? I could swear I just heard a bird. I must be hearing things. That's funny. Do you hear anything? It sounds like a canary, but that's impossible. Busby, can you see anything up there? You mean like a bird? Come in, Voyager. Come in. Kid here, sir. Listen, kid. We've just discovered that there was something else missing. It wouldn't be a wind-up canary, would it? That's right. Have you seen it? I'll say we have, and it's seen us, too. Well, hurry up and catch it. There's less than two hours left. Yes, sir. If it doesn't catch us first. Move her, Busby. Busby, here it comes again. Uh-oh. Time to get going. That thing is like a guided missile. I can't get rid of it. It's gaining. Wait. What's that up there? I believe. It is one of the cones of the miniaturization machine. Can we get in there? It'll be dangerous if we touch that filament. We've got to chance it. In the cone, Busby. But don't touch those power grids, whatever you do. I'll try. Busby. Boy, 
Major. It's almost time. Hurry. Where the devil are they? We're out. Yeah, but it's still on our tail. That did it. Oh, I'll say. Now let's get down to the pad. What about the fire truck? Forget it. Look at the clock. Don't waste time, Busby. We're on the pad, Professor. And not a moment too soon. Activate process. <laughs> I can't! The gears are melted! What'll we do? I don't know. Let me think. There's no time. I... What's that? Look! The fire's going out. Start process! Just made it that time. Look over here. The toys, they're back to normal. See, I told you it would be easy. And as usual, you were wrong. So, these are the harmless little toys, which nearly destroyed the CMDF. Well, at least they're harmless now, sir. Look out! Guru, you did that. Very funny! <laughs> <laughs> from America, where they rush, rush, rush. Work, work, work. Don't they go mad? Yet they escape to Belgium. Escape? Abandon themselves to pleasures, eat and drink delicious things, get treated like czar by friendly waitress. Pretty girl. We do Belgians escape. <laughs> Your escape from the everyday. Jovia. <laughs> Thank you. 
Wrap up the holidays with Batman. The gift you want to give. The gift they want to get. Batman on video cassette for sale at stores everywhere. Hey, I hope you enjoyed Fantastic Voyage. You know, I'm a sucker for Craven the Hunter. Oh, one of one of, if not my favorite Spider-Man villain. Uh, he's part of my favorite Spider-Man story arc. Um, he's he did a, a crossover with uh, Daredevil, the one without fear. He was in X-Men, uh, hunting Wolverine of all people. I just really like that character, man. I think he's severely underrated. But that's just my opinion. So, um, we're getting ready for some uh, Christmas episode stuff. Uh, last night was your favorite Christmas present as an adult. Um, I want to have your favorite Christmas present as a kid. If you remember your favorite Christmas present as a kid. Uh, I remember some cool presents. I don't know if I remember my favorite. I uh, definitely loved it when my parents got me uh, the year I got a VCR. That was such a cool time. Um, but, you know, probably maybe when I was little, maybe the, the, the Christmas I got an Atari. I don't know. But I want to hear, what was your favorite Christmas present as a kid just type it in there so we're gonna keep it going we're doing another Mork and Mindy Laverne and Shirley Fonzie hour uh, you guys all seem to like those I'm having a fun finding them uh, we may repeat some stuff I've repeated that I've played before but now we're putting them in the block where they properly go so eh, if it is we do we do we don't we don't but we're putting it in the block that three episodes so, all right, here you go. Let's go. This is episode four. Enjoy. Nano, nano. More. Yes, your immenseness. You won't learn anything about that planet playing games. Go enroll in school. So I can learn to play games? No, I mean a regular school. Now go find yourself a place to stay and get hoppy. Just make yourself at home more. getting the paper more. Gosh, Mr. McConnell, on TV, the family dog always brings in the paper. It was my fault. I shouldn't have said just fetch. I should have said fetch the paper. You're just trying to protect him. This isn't his first defense. I've had it with going, raiding the refrigerator, sleeping in my chair, and hogging the TV watching dog food commercials. You're definitely not a house dog. Out? I'm buying you a dog. From now on, you live and sleep outside. <laughs> Poor Doing. He just can't get comfortable in a doghouse. I'm worried, Mark. He could get a chill sleeping alone on that branch. He won't be alone, Min. I can never sleep without Doing cuddling up at my feet. I've got to go, Mark. That store will be open late, and I promised him I'd work tonight. 
please try to think of a way to redeem Doink so you can both come back in the house? Sure thing, Min. I'll put in my thinking head and think of a brainstorm. I'll see you tonight when I get home. And that's the problem, Eugene. I've got to find a way to redeem Doink in Mr. McConnell's eyes so we'll let him back in the house. That's a snap, Morky. I got it. Ah, uh, my favorite munchkin never lets me down. How? Teach him to fetch the paper. Mr. McConnell will love a dog who brings in a paper. Oh, we already tried that and knuckled everything up. Good boy, good boy. Here, have a treat. Uh -oh. That's it, Eugene. What's it? We'll prove to Mr. McConnell that Doing is a fantabulous watchdog and needed inside the house. <laughs> There's nothing more valuable to a homeowner than a super stiffy watchdog. Mr. McConnell will be begging me to bring Doing in the house. How are you going to do that, Morky? Doing doesn't even look like a watchdog. In fact, he doesn't look like a dog. <laughs> it's simple. I'll disguise myself as a burglar and break into Mindy's house. Now you borrow your dad's camera and take pictures of Doing chasing me away. Hey, man, no sweat. It can't miss. I'll get a burglar disguise and meet you tonight at Mindy's. None new, good buddy. As soon as Eugene comes with that camera, my doing will be a hero. Over here, good buddy. I could use some help. Hi. You must be Mr. McConnell's new neighbor. What's the problem? <laughs> neighbor. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I like guys with a shaky tuba. A one arm bandit with a built in flashlight and a phony hand. Genius. Put it here, pal. The name's Clarence. Oh, pleased to meet you, Mr. Clarence. What can I do for you? Uh, uh, I forgot my skeleton key. Uh, can you help me open this window? Oh, sure, Mr. Clarence. Skeletons aren't much good at opening anything anyway, so. Oh, I'll have your window open in a stiffy jiffy. Fantastic! Yo, I gotta get me one of their mechanical hands. Oh, you're a real pro, mister. Have you taste your joint? Well, that would be difficult, Mr. Clarence. I mean, they don't sell suitcases that big. <laughs> wow! You're a regular comedian. What kind of goodies they got in there, buddy? Well, let me see. Fancy TVs, Mr. McConnell's grandmother's sterling silver, all the money for Mindy's college education, ten years of Orson's allowance money, and... Wow-wee! Hey, that's better than my joint. How about old Clarence helping you? You and me, we'd make a great team! Super idea, Mr. Clarence. Two of us are really convinced the homeowner that he needs burglar protection. Funny, <laughs> funny! You're a gas partner. Wait, you got a mask? Sure thing. Always carry one just in case. Oh, that's better, neighbor person. We gotta look professional. Don't wake the dog. Ooh la la! That mechanical figure is Neo. <laughs> Dreams to eight. Eugene should be here any second. Open up. It's me. Right on time, little munchkin. Now you bring Doing inside. I'll wait in the bushes. Gotcha. I'll whistle when I'm ready. Then you break in. Right through the window, just like we planned. Help! Police! Shh! It's me, Mark. Be quiet or you'll spoil everything. Spoil what? What are you doing dressed like a burglar? That's Eugene's signal. No time now, little mama. I'll explain later. Thanks, pal. You're the best. Mark, that's... Shh, man. Meet Clarence, our neighbor. He's helping me. You mean he's helping himself to everything we own. He's Clarence the cat burglar, the most wanted crook in town. Yeah, why they know me? Hey, Marco, what's keeping you? Good grief, Mark, what's going on? Gosh, man, we're just trying to get a picture of Doing chasing a burglar person away. So your father would let him back in the house. Oh, no, and a real burglar came instead. Look, he's getting away. We've got to catch him and get our stuff back before my father comes home. Gotcha, little men. Quick, into my egg car. I'll catch up with you later, Morky. 
I gotta return my dad's camera. Nice going, Mark. We're gaining on him. Right, little mama. This Grimble Pizzati is the hottest egg ever made. Now to zap his tires with my charcoal ray and make them blow. Look out! Strange weather on Earth. Isn't it always raining bricks in October? Mark, look! We've lost the burglar! Oh, keep searching, Min. The polecat burglar's car's got to be around here somewhere. Aha! Point your peepers yonder. We found the crooked cat. Oh, Mark, we'll never find out which apartment he's in. Little Mama and her little Mork won't, but little Doing will. Okay, pal, you got ten bleams to find the polecat so we can fribble him and get back Mr. McConnell's stiffy stuff. Min, Doing found him. Oh, you did it, Doing. I got the match. It's locked. No problem, Min. My finger will open it in half a bleed. No, Mork. That would be breaking and entering. We can't break the law. We need the police. Good thoughtfulness, Min. Open up in the name of the law, people. This is Inspector Mork of Scotland Yard. Oh, yeah. And I'm your boy, the Queen of England. At first, you don't succeed. You ask for help. Your turn, Pooch Pal. You make like the real police persons. We can go in now, Min. He's invited us. Uh-oh, my key finger's stuck. Oh, Mark. Dear, not my favorite female. My shoulder's not stuck. Mark, he's a champion down there, too. Leave it to me, Min. Help! Help! Doing fetch. That's my doing, the world's greatest watchdogger. And the strange mixed breed dog single-handedly captured Clarence the Cat Burglar, Boulder City's most wanted criminal. Spiffy little mama, but how come your dress fell down? It didn't fall down, Morph. The dress is supposed to be this long. It's an evening gown. Evening gown? But it's not. Oh, oh don't worry, my men. We'll get you the best doctors in the country, and Doing will make a wonderful guide dog. Oh, I promise you, men, soon those eyes will be able to tell Dave from night again. Mark, there's nothing wrong with my eyes. Then why are you wearing an evening gown in the daytime? I was just trying it on to see how I'd look for the finals of the beauty contest tonight. <gasps> oh, no! I'm ruined! Min, what's wrong? My nose! Can't you see? It's got a terrible bug bite on the end of it. I'm disfigured. I'll never win that beauty contest now. Not to worry, little mama. A little orc and zap will rid you of that in a spiffy jab. Huh? Is it gone? Uh, yeah, but, um... Oh, Mork, thank you. Ah! Mork! Just a teensy miscalculation, then. I'll fix it. Huh? My ears! You're giving me elephant ears! Oh, look at the bright side, men. You can flap them and keep yourself cool all summer. Mork! Okay, 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 okay. I'll take care of it. Oh, 
psychological embarrassment of all times to have a primary digit malfunction. Don't worry, little Min. I'll straighten this whole thing out. No! Stay away from me! Trust me, Min. Trust me. I did trust you, and look at me! Well, you, you've got to admit your bug bite is gone. No! Min, 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 wait! Oh. Hey, Min, wait! I got a present for you, Min. A banana. Gorillas love bananas. <laughs> I've got a great idea, Min. We'll give you a real close shave. Then some makeup and dark glasses. I bet the judges won't even notice your gorilla. And if they do, I'll... <laughs> Who knows? Maybe if Marlon Perkins is a judge, you stand a fighting chance. Will you leave me alone? Okay, you don't like that, but how about... <laughs> All right, little friend. I hope I didn't hurt you. Oh, sad accident. We lost our little Min. Come on, Doing. We've got to find little Mama and de-gorilla fire. <laughs> DuPont residence, the one and only Hamilton J. DuPont, the 25th, speaking. Oh, Hamilton, I'm in trouble. I need help. And you called me? Uh, and you called me, naturally. I'm at Elman Fifth. Can you meet me? Does a monkey like bananas? Who told you? Who told me what? Never mind. Just get here. On my way, you gorgeous little chick. <laughs> Mindy? Where are you, Mindy? Right here, Hamilton. Oh, little Mindy, my... No! Let me out of here! Oh, well, I'll just have to drive myself to the hospital for help. Mindy, wait! Get away from me, you... You... Oh, she's getting away after her. Gorilla driving that car! Oh, you shouldn't want to talk that way about kids. Just because they have long hair. This ain't no hippie, Mac. It's a real gorilla on the loose. Get the net ready. We gotta catch him. Min's gotta be around here somewhere, doing. Bravo! Help! Help! Shut up, they've got a Min. This calls for action, came out sorry. Hello, that gorilla. I mean, Mindy. Get lost, you big ape. I'm not in the mood. Mm -hmm. Mia, a jailbreak. We're gonna bust you out of here. But which one are you, little mama? Oh, there you are. I'd recognize your kiss anywhere. Come on, Min. We gotta blow this popsicle stand before the guard person gets wise. Snap it up, Doing. We've gotta get Min home and fix her up. <laughs> this is no time to argue, Min. Leave it to me. I know what I'm doing. I'll have you back to Min in a min, Min. Min, Min, it's me, your Mork. Mork. <laughs> Shut up, we got the wrong men. Come on, little dog. We're taking this gorilla back to the zoo. I've got a plan to help us find the real little mama. Quiet now. We gotta sneak in and find the real men. Men. <laughs> oh, pardon me, sir. You? Men? Where are you? Ali Ali Trace in free. Oh, you're not Min. You're a mama gorilla. Tell me, Fuzzy Mama, have you seen my Min? Oh, careful, please. I'm not a jackhammer. Oh, this is a rented suit. You who? Min? Where are you? Mork, is that you? Oh, joyous day in you, little mama. What are you doing here? I came to rescue you. Come on, let's gotta get out of here. Mark, look! It's the gorilla catchers! Look! More loose gorillas! It must be an epidemic! Come on, let's get them! Oh, 
shout about law persons dead ahead. It's the escaped gorillas they called us about. Get them. We're trapped. Look, little mama, the TV station with tonight's beauty contest. You can still make it. The way I look, never. Oh, well, back to the cage. No, Minna Mine is going to be caged. We're gorillas, remember? We'll climb over the building. Hey, that's right. Come on. They're getting away. All for a backup. Have them send choppers. All right, you gorillas. You're surrounded. Climb down with your hands over your head. Uh, your paws over your heads. Ma, what are you doing? Well, you know, there was this giant monkey, Emperor Kong. You know, he was captured in the jungle and fell in love with... I saw the movie, Mork. Hey, huh? You know the part I like best? It was where he climbed up the Empire State Building and... Mork, can we do the review later? Right now, we're in big trouble. Uh-oh. Time for this gorilla to do the carrying. Geronimo! isn't long enough to get us down. In that case, we will go in. Oh, look, they're rehearsing for the beauty contest. If anybody recognizes me, I'll die. Don't worry, men. I'll take care of everything. More calling Orson. Emergency code Quillfrack. More calling Orson. All right. All right. I hear you. What's the emergency? Just read my mind, Orson. It's quicker that way. Hmm, I see. You have to get Mindy back to normal. Here, this should do the trick. What is that? Oh, a Glitzfelder. I'll have you back to normal in no time. Ready, Min? I think so. Oh, Mark, you did it! Uh-oh. Mark, do something! See? No problem, Min. Everything's back to normal. Mork, would you do me one more favor? Sure. I know. The bug bite on your nose. No. I can do it, Min. Really, I can. Will you just go home and sit on your hands until this beauty contest is over tonight? Please. Okay. Good idea, favorite earthling. I'm dying to get out of this itchy gorilla suit. Mork? Yes, your immenseness. Tell me about this beauty contest business. Earthlings don't always make sense, Your Immenseness. They line up their females to decide which one is the most beautiful on the outside, when the most beautiful parts of the people are on the inside, where they can't be seen. Then this beauty contest is just a silly charade. Well, maybe not in this case. And the winner of the Miss Boulder beauty contest is... Mindy McConnell. In this case, they did pick the most beautiful. Careful, Your Hugeness. That was a very earthly thing to do. Nanu, Nanu. on the base, you get your passes. We did that. We painted them. Pink is not an official U.S. of Army color, Trooperettes. Well, it was the only color in this U.S. of Army paint spray, a squealy. Unless you prefer yellow, a orange, a purple. That's enough. Give me that. Yeah! I think the pig is out of control, Laverne. But you got it, Met Cheryl. You can't feel more. It's a lot easier on the eyes this way. You girls are going to be pulling guard duty for a month. A year, maybe. This might be a good time to pack for our weekend, Laverne. Right, Cheryl. The coast seems to be clear. Right, Cheryl. No pork on the horizon. We'll go to the motor pool, borrow a jeep, and just drive right off the base. 
Are you sure what we're doing is right, Laverne? Of course it isn't, Cheryl. Oh, okay. I just wanted to be sure. Hmm. Deserting the base without a pierce, eh? We'll just see about that. That's it, cool. The best tune-up the Fines has ever done. And that's saying something. Right, Woo! Woo! How about you clean it up and we'll take it for a test spin? Yeah, right. We'll clean. Back in a flash, cool. Hurry, Laverne. I know I saw Squilly sneaking after us. Can't that porker mind his own business? Start the engine. I think the ignition is somewhere else, Laverne. I'll find it. I'll find it. Sergeant Hindbuckle would like to know what you're up to. <laughs> Oh, Laverne, we're going to get at least 20 years for this. What? The leather, cool. Remember the leather? I forgot again, Ron. Yeah. Hey, stop. <laughs> Why do I get my hands on you two? That Jeep hasn't been tested yet. It's okay, Fonz. We'll test it for you. Step on the gas, Laverne. Not the gas. Oh, no. What the fans call severe overdrive. Mr. Cool, too. Severe overdrive. Come on, Cool. We gotta do the same tune up on that chopper and follow him. No telling what kind of trouble they got themselves into in that soup. Oh, gee. Oh, say, this Jeep has some pickup. And look where you've put us. It's Florida. Oh, Laverne, we're in Miami. Relax, Cheryl. You're rocking a boat here. You've done it this time, Sweeney. A war without permission, kidnapping a superior pig, an unauthorized stop against an unauthorized tree trunk. <laughs> These demerits are adding up fast. Squealy! Fazio, did these ears just hear that tree trunk roar? But, 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 but it's not a tree trunk. It's a dinosaur. <laughs> oh, my. Do you suppose the military manual has a chapter on this eventuality? Well, let's see. There it is, Cheryl, on the miscellaneous disasters. Run! <laughs> Let's run towards the beach. We can hide in one of the hotels. Uh, this can't be Florida, Cheryl. I'm almost positive they don't have dinosaurs in Florida. Okay, everybody split up. It's every pig for himself. Squealy, you're running the wrong way. Help! You're, you're showing, showing him. him. Okay, soldier, dismissed. I guess I showed him. Let's get out of here. Yes, sir. So if this isn't Miami Beach, where are we? Attention, please. Your superior officer has a theory here. This should be good. This theory, which is mine, holds that Fonzie's souped-up jeep has blasted us through the time barrier and into prehistory. Prehistory? You mean like before Columbus? I mean like before people! He may have a point, Laverne. Plants don't eat pigs in Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah! It's like they don't eat them here, either. <laughs> I think what we need is a jungle guidebook. What guidebook? You got me, soldier. I found us food, didn't I? All right, cool as you do it. You did put the accelerator coil in just like I told you, didn't you? Absolutely wrong. Then we'll be wherever they are in no time. Hold tight, hold tight, yeah, whoa. Anything you'd like to say about this, cool? Backwards. That's right, Mr. Cool. I think you put it in backwards. It's <laughs> not funny, puppy. <laughs> up, top, rup, roll. Up, top, rup, roll. Well, I don't know about you, Laverne, but I've had it. Yeah, me too, Cheryl. I haven't got any more hump in my top. 
Come on, recruits. We gotta find that jeep to get back home. But Squealy, we've been walking for hours. The burn, Squealy. I found civilization. You see, there are people here. These people aren't exactly what I call civilized, sure. There isn't a TV antenna on any of the huts. Shirley! The bird, stop that! You could hurt yourself! I don't think she's fallen on purpose, Beanie. Luana, you take Tor to be husband and share cave? <gasps> Luana, take Tor. And Tor, you take Luana to... Look out for her! Yay! I, uh, I'll go on with the what you were doing. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Tor wants Stranger to share cave. <laughs> Share cave? Uh, what you talking about? Uh, 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 couldn't we just go steady for a while? Uh, do I want stranger? Uh, uh. Not crisis. Crunch and guard take care of stranger for Luana. Oh, good. Luana feel better now. <laughs> if Tor wants Stranger, okay with Chief. Now, wait a minute here. Maybe it's not okay with Stranger. Wedding in one hour. Tor keeps Stranger safe until then. <laughs> hey, put me down. Gee, you're a strong one, aren't you? If I had my demerit book to Fozzie, you'd be getting 25 big ones for desertion. Desertion? Squealy, she's been abducted by a caveman. That's 15 tops. They've got her in that hut. So we've got to sneak right up there and give those cavemen a piece of my mind. Uh, excuse me. Bush not see where Bush going, Ungabung. Other Bush with me. Vern, we come to take you away. Great, now I'm here and talking plants. No, Vern, it's us. We come to rescue you. Gee, Cheryl, you look good and green. Do you really think so? Will you two trooperettes get down to busyness? We got a rescue to attempt here. What are they planning to do to you? They're gonna marry me off to some cave brute, Cheryl. Pretty stranger, Tor is here. That's lover boy now. You gotta hide. I'll hide under here. Get your own spot, Feeny, and that's in order. Hurry, Cheryl, he's coming. Oh, I always hated hide and seek. Good, Cheryl. You can be a floor lamp. Tor just want to say hello. Yeah, well, I, uh, hello and goodbye. Uh, it's bad luck to see the bride before she escapes. I mean, before the wedding. Tor, understand. <laughs> you shy. Laverne, shy? <laughs> That's a laugh. Uh, I didn't hear anything. Uh, carpet lumpy. Tor fix. <laughs> Tor go now. See pretty stranger later. <laughs> yeah, much, much later. Bye now. Squealy, are you all right? I've been better. Come on, you guys. We have to get out of here. Lucky for us all, I have a plan. We're going to dig our way to safety. Leave it to the pig to find the dirty way out. Don't worry, sis. We find way to get Stranger alone. Then you take care of her? Oh, I wanna like the way you do that, Crunch. Oh. We made it! We made it! Is that the sweet aroma of freedom I smell? Sure, if I were you, I'd have my nose examined. Uh, why do I get the feeling we're in trouble again? Bye, my strangers. <laughs> you don't understand. I don't want Tor. Something wrong with Tor? You can't win with these people. Don't worry, DeFazio. We're not stranded out here. He's right, Laverne. Do they really think we can't swim? <laughs> now, what do you suppose he was whistling for? I can only hope it was a water taxi. No, no, Laverne. I think it was <gasps> him! Where's the Fonz when we really need him? Uh, who needs Fonzie 
when you have me and my army manual. You were saying... Okay, cool this shit, boys. Hold tight, hold tight, because we're going to roll now. <laughs> hey, when I say hold tight, I mean, like, get a grip on yourself, dig it. Wait, why do you like this? That's better, that's better. Now, let's see what kind of power we got. Help sounds like trouble. No more trouble, Lawrence. Look. Actually, triple trouble. Ooh. Triple trouble? That's trouble. Oh, this calls for some fancy driving. The bird, it's Bonzi. What kind of trouble have you gotten yourselves into this time? Triple trouble. Ooh, triple trouble. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> Oh, just wait one minute here. Nobody eats my chopper and gets away with it. All right, now perk your ears up for this, because I'm only going to say it once. You lay off my friends, or you're going to have the fonts to deal with. I can't believe it. He's never heard of the fonts. All right, everybody, on to that log. The surf is about to be up. Hey, it was nothing any red blooded American hero wouldn't have done. Stranger gone! Tour Stranger gone! Wanna wonder where Stranger went? <laughs> Friends help Tor find Stranger! <laughs> no goof up recruits have been nothing but trouble, and Sergeant Tyne Buckler's gonna hear all about it! Hold on to your pork squeal. First things first, we gotta find that Jeep and get back. That Jeep has gotta be around here somewhere. Maybe they've seen it. Oh no, it's them again. Stranger! <laughs> you certainly are, buddy. Stranger than anything I've ever seen. <laughs> you tell them, Bonds. We have nothing to fear with Fonzie between us and them, Laverne. <laughs> Yeah, on the wing. You were saying, Cheryl? Well, it looks like I gotta go through this wedding, Cheryl. Look at it this way. As cavemen go, Tor isn't so bad. You could have done worse. The only thing worse is marrying a pig. Oh, that's cute, DeFazio. And you haven't heard the end of this, making me your flower pig. I have never been so embarrassed in my life. Aw, squealy. Ain't life tough. Oh, look, Laverne. They're bringing your wedding gifts. I warn you, say one word about this and my vengeance will be awesome. You've made your point, Squealy. Some wedding gifts. Two boulders, seven coconuts, three mammoth furs, five bone necklaces. And two pieces of tacky luggage. Wait a minute, Shaw. That's our tacky luggage. They must have found the Jeep. Is there no end to my suffering? Say, this gives me an idea, Laverne. Listen, Luana, it's time we got on the same side here. You want tour, right? You want a one tour, right? Well, you just put yourselves in our hands and you'll have that cave boy before you know it. What me have to do? Just leave everything to us. Hey, the view is great, but uh, where were you taking us? I don't like the sound of that. Me neither, Ron. <laughs> no, that's terrific. She's probably off to get us a dinner of worms. Worms? Yeah. Hey, relax, cool. I don't plan to stick around here until munch time. But you look bad. What is it, Ron? That's our Jeep, cool. All we got to do is to get away before that overgrown canary comes back, grab the jeep, and we're home free. Right! Yikes! Uh-oh. A real bad time for the miracle of birth. If that chick starts chirping, it'll bring back its mother for sure. Hey, Ronald, Mr. Cool, I can have a wish. 
Don't do it. Uh, Puppy, I, I don't think the Band-Aids are going to do the trick here. We're in for it now, cool. We need some very fast thinking, and I'm talking fast. Squawk! 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 Gee, tank! Squawk! Squawk! Oh. <laughs> yum, yum! Squawk! 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 Good work, pal. Now let's get out of here while they're getting this good. Oh, Tor! Tor! Have we got something to show you? My stranger ready for ceremony? <laughs> you thought Laverne was strange. Well, feast those primitive eyeballs on this. Luana! Come on, Luana. Like we practiced. Hi, caveman. New in town? Whoa, Luana! It worked! Oh, the birds! Don't they make a cute couple? In case you two reject recruits have forgotten, we are still trapped in one million BC here. Right, and now that I'm not a bride to be. If not bride of Tor, then bride of Volcano! Volcano? Have we met some guy named Volcano, sure? Volcano! Now, see here, Mr. Caveman. I cannot allow you to throw military property into a live volcano. But then I guess it's out of my hands, isn't it? The pig tried, Laverne. Not hard enough, Cheryl. Dad of Volcano, we bring you food. Food? Listen to this, Cheryl. I'm just a peanut butter and jelly sandwich to these guys. Laverne, you're interrupting the chief. Here she come. Ready or not? I'm ready. On three. One. What come after one? Two. Two. Whose side are you on, Squealy? Well, he's on your side, of course, Laverne. But honestly, don't you think this whole thing is just a little ridiculous? But uh, not at the moment. No! Help! Okay, okay. This has gone far enough. Tell him, Cheryl. I refuse to stand by and watch this travesty of justice. A good word, Cheryl. I warn you, if you throw Laverne into that volcano, you're going to have to throw me and the pig in right along with her. Okay. Okay? Way to go, Feeny. Whoa! Unhand those chicks and that little pork and food. Yay! Come on! It's Fonzie! We're saved! No! We're sunk! Help! Oh, I can't look! You saved us! All in a day's heroics there, Shirley, you cute. Oh! Hope Volcano God not mind skipping meal from time to time. We're home! We are go, Hans! Camp Fillmore, everybody out. With pleasure. What do you suppose got into him? He probably remembered something important he had to do. Yeah, and I better start working on souping this Jeep down. Sometimes I don't know my own power, you know what I mean? I know what you mean, Lawrence. Hey. I can't believe what we've just been through, Cheryl. Well, all's well that ends well, I always say. And this is ending great, except for you two. <laughs> uh, a new the merit book! Now, let's see. Abducting an official army pig, taking a military vehicle into an unauthorized century. Oh, that's 200 demerits right there. Then there's feeding a superior officer to a volcano. And leave us not forget the pig-eating plant. This is all adding up. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it.
Wheels, and I'll be right back with one to grow on. Hey! What are you guys doing? Then your business trip, now feed it! That's a tough one. There's nothing wrong with playing a practical joke once in a while. I've played a few in my day. But if you see that somebody's idea of a joke is liable to hurt somebody, then you've got to do something about it. That's not being a tattletale. That's just plain common sense. Hey, mister. Somebody's playing with those swings over there. And they're going to fall if somebody plays with them. Hold it, kids. That swing is dangerous. Hey, good work. I'll take care of those other guys. They hang out on the other side of the park. Thanks for helping out the other kids. And that's one to grow on. You'll line up the road in the General V in swift pursuit. You can guarantee our Roscoe and Boss Hog light the trail. If they get you, you know, they'll toss you in jail. You zig and you zag. Spin out with ease, but Roscoe's got Luke and Bo in a tight squeeze. But coming up again is that great big leap. You make it good, but Roscoe winds up in a great big heat. Yahoo! So if you want to fly and do stunts like real with cars that got the Luke and the racing deal, you get the Duke of Hazard and Racing Set, which is from ID. Alright, hope you guys like the Mork and Mindy, Laverne and Shirley, and Fonzie hour. Um, we're going into something. Boom! We're going from the 60s, the 80s. Now we're going into the 90s. We're doing some extreme dinosaurs. Uh, because if it came out in the 90s, it has to be extreme. Or, or it, it, it didn't. It wasn't allowed. Uh, you had extreme Ghostbusters. You had, uh, you know, you had extreme dinos. Uh, you had, uh, yeah, just, you had extreme Doritos. And you, of course, you had the most extreme thing of all, Mountain Dew. Which back then, you didn't have 18 flavors of Mountain Dew. You simply had Mountain Dew and diet. Uh, now you have, oh, so many Mountain Dews. Ah, and everybody, we got fruit quake at the shop. So I did not drink it because I don't drink Mountain Dew. I like my stomach, I guess. I don't know. <clears throat> but this is Extreme Dinos, episode five. And you know what? <sighs> Man, Extreme Dinos. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put something together. Even though I've done Dino Saucers and I've done uh, Dino Riders, maybe I'll throw, maybe I'll find Denver. I'll just have a dinosaur morning. So, all right. that's There you go. So I'm going to... Let you guys enjoy episode five, Extreme Dinos. Morning, Mrs. Block sees me eating Kellogg's Frosted Mini Wheats. Now the whole neighborhood thinks he keeps his eye on nutrition. He loves his choice frosting. We're talking serious. Holy grain wheat. Kellogg's Frosted Mini Wheat cereal is an excellent part of this complete breakfast. Why can't more kids be like him? Eric Hennigan, he's got the stuff. The stuff of heroes. The stuff he ordered from Kellogg's Frosted Mini Wheats. Cool Grand Hill stuff from $1 to $8.95. You can get your own stuff. It's a brand new Kool-Aid Flavor Vision video. Tasty and styling. It's the new combo in from Island Twist. Brothers and sisters, raise your hands. Oh, yeah. Meet the jamming new member of our band. Slam, slam, slam. Strawberry Kiwi. All right, so, you know, I know I said, what was your favorite, uh, you know, present as a kid? Uh, I also want to know, do you still have your favorite present as a kid? Um, I most certainly do not. Um, that those whole thing where your parents made you throw away stuff or get rid of it, um, that was me. Uh, I had a handful of stuff that survived the purge. Um, so I've I've inherited I've got most of it back, but it is what it is. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed Extreme Dinosaurs. Uh, we're going to another '90s classic, and that is Skeleton Warriors. Um, man, I got some Skeleton Warriors in at the shop a while back. Man, 
cool toys. Cool toys, man. Uh, I get the one, was it the one, like, six-armed one? That's cool. So, this is Skeleton Warriors, and this is episode 10, Overload. These are the tales of the Skeleton Warriors. <laughs> and determination. No battle is ever won without them. But when those attributes are misplaced, are they as easily recovered as other weapons of war? There's a chance this could fail. Baron, this is all experimental. So many variables, so little control. All I care about is success. Now tell me, are we ready? We're ready. Now, for the Legion of Light! And exactly how soon before all four reflectors are operational? Soon. Now, in fact. Sound the alarm! Secure the hill! My crystal, Cyborg! We have to save my crystal!
Baron Dark sacrificed his own warriors to keep us from his crystal. And our people? The scanner picks up everybody. Except one. I'm going back up. No, we can't go back for the crystal. This whole mountain is rigged to blow. Report back to the base camp. Have Guardian organize a search party for our missing member as soon as it's dark. No. I'll start looking now. I said we'll send out a search team after it's dark. And I said I'll go now. It's Talon. She's the one missing. Move that reflector and take out this mountain! <sighs> no damage. The structural integrity of your half of the crystal is intact. And when the reflectors are online? Well, in theory, the amplified energies will enhance its power. Sequence in 20 seconds. Will there be enough power to make up for the half still in the hands of the Legion of Light? According to all calculations... 15 seconds until auto-destruct. Excellent, Doctor. I want that power. Uh, of course, my lead. Now, please, Five, I really must insist ten, that we evacuate. Six, yes, well, four, whatever. Three, two, one. Initiate auto-destruct. Check in or Light Star and Grimskull will think we're in trouble or something. You must go now. I'll be all right alone. You must go and find my brothers now. Fly safe. Campbell, you and Thomas organized two squadrons to comb the Eastern Quadrant. We have to catch Baron Dark before he can set up his operation again. Dark could be anywhere out there, even with all available personnel out looking for him. What about Talon? I said all available. You're gonna to be too busy out there looking for our sister. Thank you, Justin. I know you'd rather go yourself. All right, people, let's move out. You fools! Princess Tailspin's got to be here somewhere. The Baron will appreciate a little initiative for once. Yes, well, I'm still picking dirt out of me joints, aren't I? I don't like having mountains blown out from under me. Well, would you rather have one dropped on top of you? I'm sure the Baron will be happy to oblige. Yeah, well, you ask me, these pulse indicators won't pick up anything. I saw her fall and it wasn't pretty. Then look for something really ugly. Come on. Here now, isn't that the royal birdie? Ooh. <laughs> oh, the spider is about to catch the helpless fly. She can't be far. I may not be able to see any skeleton warriors coming, but maybe I can hear them. No sign of her in my sector. They're right in front of me. She can't have vanished into thin air. Please, Baron. This technology is still highly experimental. Exper
experimental. Look at our cyborg. It's all experimental. With enough power, anything is possible. Where am I? Cool air. Rock floor. Must be a cave of some sort. I hope nobody's home. Water. Find the water. Thirsty. Get a drink. Set up defenses. Alarm. Nothing in here. Here now, we stop it. Stay. No, no, slow down. Oh, we've got work to do. <laughs> Any word yet on Talon? No. Grimskull will call in when he finds something. Best to concentrate on what the Baron's up to. And from what I've been able to determine, it's serious. I'm afraid he's trying to. Well, for lack of a better term, supercharge his half of the crystal. But that's insane. Too much energy in his half of the crystal could fracture. Or even explode. No, nah, but according to my model, with just enough, his half could be as powerful as the whole crystal. And we could be in a whole lot of trouble. Guardian, you're breaking up. Repeat. You're... Lightstar, I, I can't hear you. The crystal! Dark, you fool. You dangerous, dangerous fool! Where are you? Brought me any royal remnants? Well, Baron, sir, uh, uh, it's like this, actually. Uh, these woods are full of uh, trees. And what would this place bigger than that? So small in pieces of which would be a pretty ah, if... What's happening with this transmitter? Sire, it's the crystal. The more energy we channel into it, the greater the interference it generates. Gad, that static was annoying. Now, on to more important work. So, Cyborn, how much longer? Soon, Baron. The reflector will be online shortly. <sighs> the promise of ultimate power does take the sting out of life's little annoyances, eh, Cyborn? Oh, great. I can't see him coming, and now I can't hear him coming either. <sighs> if I have any more surprise visitors, I better have a few surprises myself. Guardian! Guardian! I can't hear a thing out there! Seraphine, Guardian, where's Talon? Is, is she here? No. Seraphina arrived a short while ago, alone. What about Grimskull? No word. And we're not likely to get any either. This mad crystal scheme of Baron Darks has shut down all transmissions. You mean Grimskull and Talon are both cut off out there? I'm glad you're enjoying yourself. I'm sure the Baron will enjoy sharing the humor of the situation if these fireworks don't succeed in flushing out Her Royal Highness. <laughs> Typical. Well, well, well. Looks like somebody's worried about Sis. Base. Base, can you hear me? Base. Guardian, do you read? Probably not, but I do. For the Legion of Lightbulbs! <laughs> Going 
down and going up. Fine. We'll play it your way. Don't forget to write. Miss me, Principal! Miss me, miss me, now you gotta kiss me, I don't... I don't think so. All right, sis. You have to be around here somewhere. That's odd. We've lost all contact with the search team. Yeah, enough of this incompetence. Get that reflector online now. I'll go finish this job myself. And remember, our comm links won't be working. You'll be on your own up there, so use your best judgment. Understood? Lightstar, I must speak with you. It's urgent. Lightstar, there's only one way to stop Baron Dark now. I know. We're leaving right now to take out the remaining reflector. No, that's not enough. Dark will simply put up more reflectors and wait until the next sunny day. So, what are you saying? The only way to stop Baron Dark from achieving his goal is to overload the crystal with energy, fundamentally changing its very structure. So then Baron Dark won't be able to power it enough to serve his purposes. Exactly. But this comes at a price. Well, there's... No guarantee that his half will reunite properly with ours, assuming we ever get it back. And there's a more immediate concern. If you're able to energize the reflector properly, the crystal will overload, its structure will change, and the resulting explosion will destroy this whole area. We can evacuate the safe camp in time, but... Damn it. And Grimskull, they're still out there! If my calculations are accurate, we have less than one hour before the crystal achieves maximum power enhancement. After that, nothing will be able to stop Baron Dark. Begin evacuating the safe camp, Guardian. When everyone's clear, I'll handle the reflector. As you wish, Lightstar. Talon, Grimskull, hurry! Hello there, sis. I'm lucky you missed. You usually don't. I'm having a little trouble seeing. Talon. No, no, I'll be all right. I'm getting better, slowly. Then let's get you out of here, carefully. We'll have the camp struck and the area cleared in five more minutes. That leaves ten minutes to overload the crystal. Anything from Talon or Grimskull? Nothing. They'll be out there when I do this. Then they'll understand. I'm not sure that I do. <coughs> Serafina, forgive me, but I don't know where Talon is and I can't reach her. But you can! Serafina! We send Serafina with a recording chip and, and maybe she can get word to them to get out of there in time. Justin, it's a long shot. My favorite kind of odds. For the Legion of Light. For my family. Intruder alert. Intruder alert. Secure sound wave. Respond. She's a regular homing pigeon.
seem to have that effect on him. Immediately clear the area however best you can. Repeat, immediately clear the area. Seraphina's done well. Let's go. Leaving so soon, I won't hear of it. This is so handy. Two for the price of one. Serafina, no! Huh? <laughs> She's fine. Come on. Time to rest now. Blink a few times, then open them slowly. Talon. Talon, can you see us? Yes! And nothing has ever looked so good in my life! As you gaze out upon those who would oppose you, do you also look beyond yourself for the tools required for victory? At what point do you turn your gaze inward? And what do you find there? Fast One's license plate. And now to be the Fast One's Dino Loop champion. Huh? That's you. Will it really loop the loop? Sure, why? Sure. Be back. There it goes. Dino Loop. I win. Fast One's Dino Loop set with Fast One's Blazing Bandit Racer. You have to put it together. New from Kenner. water weapon batteries not included with up to 30 feet of firing power an extra clip for reloading a shoulder strap for moving out there's also the m16 rifle the sidekick pistol the rpg rocket water launcher the ak center fire <laughs> found out grit still exists you can still get a subscription to grit um it is a um magazine for like outdoor living you know uh rustic living i guess so it does still exist you can still go get new issues of grit magazine didn't know it was still a thing had to go look it up the internet isn't it great I guess if it went for the internet, you wouldn't be watching the show. So, yes, the internet is awesome. <clears throat> All right. I don't know why I always put these two shows together, but why not? Because we're going to keep it that way. So, we're bringing you Mutant League. Mutant League, that's right. I got Mutant League for the what, Sega Genesis the other day, and it already sold. So, uh, this is Mutant League. This is episode 10. And I, I will. I do not know how they were able to use the music they were able to use on this. Some people said that in their market didn't have that episode or that music at the beginning of the episode. So 
I don't know. Maybe some markets had different intro music and outro music. Not 100%. So, all right, here he goes. Mutant League, episode 10. Enjoy. Today on Mutant League, when Razor Kid does the unspeakable and drops the game winning pass, Salgor lets trade rumors fly. But Razor meets his number one fan and lays his reputation on the line, promising a win for the monsters. Will Razor come through and be a hero? Or has he pushed himself over the edge? Stick around and find out on Mutant League. Long, I know it. Okay, Mutes. Screaming Evils think we're going deep. The fans think we're going deep. So we're going deep. Okay. Let's take it to them. 82Z corner. Mo, Sputer. Try to keep your heads on. Right, Monsters! Right. Raze, we need you big time on this one. Just get it close, bro. feels bad enough. No worse than I feel. We could be pulling away from the Slayers. Oh, Chill, Dark Star, and listen up. We need to put this loss behind us and start getting ready for our sumo match against the Slayers. Cheer up, Razor. You'll get them next time. I let my team down. They were counting on me. Nobody catches every pass, Razor. You don't understand. Everything I'm about is based on winning being the best, and I dropped the pass. I lost the game. Razor, listen. No. I've just got to make sure this doesn't happen again. And thanks to the generosity of Mr. Zalgor Prig, we can now add a new wing to our children's hospital. Thank you. Thank you. It was indeed my pleasure. When you are as successful as I am, you like to give something back. 
I work very hard and I always try to go beyond personal goals to do what's best for society. Knowing that I can in some way help these children is all that I care about. You know, I should cancel the check. That was a worthless press turnout, and you know why. Hospitals serve lousy food? Because we're not winners. The world wants winners, and we're stuck in second place. You can bet if Bowen's justice came here, the press would follow in droves. Tonight, we look back at the play of the day, or in this case, the worst play of the day by Razor Kid! who dropped what could have been the game-winning touchdown! A couple more of those, and people in Midway might be looking for a new receiver! Well, well, well. Finally, some good news. Razor is losing it. Kay, let's put some more pressure on him before our sumo match against the monsters. Ah, start spreading some rumors that he will be traded to the Slayers. Great, boss. It's an honor working so close to a genius. Don't you ever touch me again. Sorry, ZP. I thought we were bonding. Come on, Raze, concentrate. The game's over. The only way to forget about it is to work hard and to focus on what you're doing. Now concentrate on what Legrenz is gonna do. He fakes left like this, then he shoots for your right leg, like this. Good counter! Don't be giving away any of your best moves. You two could be on opposite teams the next time you wrestle. Say what? The trade rumors are flying. Want to see? Check it out. A trade? No way! At this point, I have no comment regarding trade discussions with the monsters about a Razor Kid. What? For one lousy Razor drop pass? A good player, and his current problems might be temporary. And the Slayers can always use some good backups. Backup? Come on, Raze. We'll talk to Eleanor and get to the bottom of this. Uh, I gotta go. I need some space. How can you believe anything Prick says? Man, you know things are tough when Prig is the only mutant sticking up for you. Still no news on the Razor Tray, but high play sources say it should happen as early as today. Today? What are you trying to do? Kill yourself? <sighs> Maybe it would have been better for the team if I was injured and out for the season. Raze, you better snap out of it before you mess up your life. Oof. Now come on. We're going to Eleanor's to clear this up. We'll send a truck for the car. trade one of the best players in the league to my biggest competition. Why, Razor? Well, I haven't been playing well. Oh, so I'm going to trade you when your value's at its lowest. And when you bounce back, I'll look like a dimworm. Hmm. Yo, nimcompoops! 
See? There's nothing to these rumors. Yeah? She just doesn't want to trade me when I'm not worth anything. A hospital? I'm not hurt. Not you, Riggs. There's someone here I want you to meet. Thanks for staying up with Jimmy last night, Bones. His spirits are much higher today. He's a great kid, Father. This is Razor, a friend of mine. Razor? Razor, kid, I'm a big fan of yours. I loved your catch in the college championship game. Yeah, I caught that one. See you later, Father. We're gonna go look up Timmy. Bones, you were here last night? I come see the kids all the time. I didn't know that. Hey, how come you never told anyone? Never came up. Come on into the Razor Museum. What? Incredible. Who is this kid? That's Timmy. And he thinks you're the greatest thing that ever wagged a tail. Wow. Why is he here? He has a rare mutant disease. They don't know when he'll be able to go home. Is there anything we can do? The doctors are doing their best. I just try to make him happy. Bones! Razor? Razor Kid is in my room? In the scales. Wow! Razor Kid is in my room! Yes! Can I see your tail? <laughs> my tail? It is so cool! <laughs> <laughs> okay, Timmy, enough fun for today. Oh, Father, come on. Sorry, son, but it's time for some more tests. Okay. Hey, will you come and visit me again sometime, Razor? Hey, bro, you can count on it. <laughs> Bye, Razor. Bye, Bones. See ya. Yo, Timmy. I'm surprised he even remembered I was in the room. Can't they rejuvenate him or something? Doctors are doing everything they can. Kind of makes you put your own problems in perspective, huh? Attention all mutants, attention all mutants. The sumo mat is now available for practice. Thank you. Ugh! No way you're getting out of this one, Raze. Come on, Raze! Use your tail! Not bad, Rays. Let's take a break. Now you got that old fire back. That's because I've got some great inspiration. Hey, Rays, this is so cool. I can't believe you got Father Patrick to let me come watch. Timmy, are you okay? We should get him back to the hospital. No, not until you promise me that I can sit on the bench when you guys sumo the Slayers. I'll do more than that. I guarantee that the monsters will beat the Slayers in tomorrow's sumo match. Mm, really? And I'm dedicating the match to a young boy who is a patient at the children's hospital. <laughs> what? Look at that publicity and he didn't pay a dime. Everyone will be rooting for him. Not I. It's just a stunt to save his sagging career. <laughs> I'll fix him. Kane, put Lagrange in the anchor spot. Anchor? What about KT? We'll move him up. Bones won't let anyone else wrestle KT. And that means that Razor will be forced to go last with the entire match on the line. That kind of pressure can make a mutant crack. Okay, listen up. For some reason, the Slayers are wrestling KT in the four spot and LaGrunge last. They're both undefeated, but I want KT. So that means you're wrestling Anchor. I'm ready. Good. Let's rock the dome. Yeah! Sumo is LaGrunge's yeah! best sport. So if you can't handle it, I'll take him. I got it covered. Yeah, don't drop this one. Two newcomers 
to the very important anchor slot, this sumo contest promises to be one for the record books. Monsters! What a match we have here today! The league-leading monsters versus a Slayer team that has never lost in sumo! just puts more pressure on Razor, just like you wanted. We need you on this one, Raz. You up for it? Go, Razor! Uzum! Look, I know I lost the last game for us, but there's no way I'm gonna let little Timmy down. Take it to him! Train for this. The grunge will fake with his left foot and dive for Razor's right leg. Watch. Hey. Uh, uh, You're right. You're too high, Raze. Get down. like we're even. Except I've got my tail. My razor! Wow, did you see him fly? <laughs> Nobody flies like Razor Kid. The Slayers have done it! They remain undefeated in Sumo! Let's get down there. I smell a publicity opportunity. It's time for the winner to strut his stuff. Timmy, can I ask you a few questions for the fans? Me? On television? Sure. Okay, let me get ready. Bam, Arrays, you're too aggressive. But good move. It just backfired. Talk to me in the rejuvenator. Wait, what about Timmy? I can't face him. I promised him we'd win. He must think I'm a loser. You'd be surprised. Timmy, how'd you like the match? I know Timmy. He's a patient at the children's hospital that I donated three million dollars to. He's one of my favorites. Aren't you, Timmy? Timmy, who's your favorite team? The Monsters. And why is that? Because Razor plays for them, and he's my favorite player! Scr- what? He, he just lost the match for the monsters. That's okay. He won lots of games before. Razor Kid is a pathetic, slumping loser. Don't you get it? He'll always be a winner in my eyes. <laughs> oh, I was just kidding, little Timmy. Oh, I'm glad to see you're such a loyal fan. The Mutant League could use more just like you. Okay, cancel the check. Razor! Excuse me, I have to go. Hey, Razor, you were great! I wish I could fly like that. 
but I lost the match, Timmy. That doesn't matter to me. You're the best. <laughs> How can I ever be a loser when I got a kid like this pulling for me? Hey, we'll get him next time, right, bro? Right. Scrod that kid. Even when I win, I lose. Calm down, ZP. You'll blow a knob. It's time once again for the MLSN Replay of the Day. Brought to you by Grip Industries. If you can't feel it, it's not Grip. Jackie LaGrange put on a display of superior sumo today against the monster's own Razor Kid, who has put everything on the line. This was a punishing battle of wills. These two veterans traded blows with the confidence of champions. But a cool head and a firm grip prevailed in the form of Jackie LaGrange, who has proven that he can play with the best of them. Congratulations, LaGrange! Street, gonna be a big man someday. You got mud on your face, you big disgrace. Kicking your can all over the place, singing, We will, we will rock you. We will rock you. We will, we will rock you. Nutty gritty, nutty gritty, it's a snack you can munch. A nutty gritty, nutty gritty, a healthy snack you can crunch. You take a, a bunch of nuts, then the kind will do. Throw in a bunch of raisins too, then invite a bunch of nuts to share with you your nutty gritty, nutty gritty. Do something good for your bod and brush your teeth Join after snack. Join the bod squad. Join the bod squad. I'm collecting fast one bracers from Southern State. Like my Dynamo was Florida Place. And my Drag King was Georgia Place. You can't beat my Jet Vet with Do Your Place. Fast ones racers with one of a kind fast ones placed from all 50 states. Eat sold separately. All right. You can race them or collect them. Drag King. Other Fast One Breezers sold separately. From Kenner. It's Kenner's new Betty Crocker Quick and Thick Shake Machine. 4D batteries not included. Pour in your milk. Add the mix. Turn it on. It's fun to fix. Quick and Thick, Quick and Thick Shake Machine. Faster, slow, round and round. Tastes so good when she drinks it down. Quick and Thick, Quick and Thick Shake Machine. Mmm, it's Crocker Quick and Thick Shake Machine with six mixes. New from Kenner. You know suppressing? Going through these old comics and reading the uh, uh, where you can get your subscriptions. I could literally get a subscription to every book Marvel put out for a year and still probably pay less than I do for a week's worth of books now. So, that's insane. Because this one was a double size issue and it was 75 cents. Man, issue 75 was 75 cents. Whew, what did I would give for books to be 75 cents again? Alright. Hope you guys still like Mutant League. Because um, you've all asked for it. We're doing another double feature. We're bringing you the Drag Pack. Um, I kind of, I kind of, my fault, I should have aired more episodes, uh, back in the day, so we're bringing it back, <gasps> no, excuse me, sorry, more drag pack, um, and we're gonna do that, cause, man, I love me some Universal Monsters, so Dracula, Wolfman, and Frankenstein, 
that works great. Uh, so this is Drag Pack. This is episode eight, and it's Hideout Hotel. Enjoy. From the monsters of the past comes a new generation dedicated to reversing the evil image of their forefathers. Under the leadership of none other than Count Dracula, known as Big D, three teenagers from the two-player group. Especially the diabolical Dr. Dread and his resident rescue, Toad, Fly, Molly Man, and Vampire, a group known as Ogre, the organization of generally rotten enterprises. It's right versus wrong, good over free, niceness against naughtiness. That's the dedication of the terrific trio, Mikey, Howard, and Transylvania Retired Spook, Specters, and Spirit Society. And this is their 300th anniversary. I know, but why couldn't we go too? And leave the world at the mercy of Dr. Dredd? Never! A Drac Pack has to stay ever vigilant. Dredd won't dare try anything with us here to stop him. Ha! Ah, there's our hotel. Nothing can stop me now. Going on vacation. Stop it, it's totally stop, stop. I'm just so happy we're taking a vacation. We are not taking a vacation. You're not? We are taking over that hotel. But Dr. Dredd, that hotel is full. It won't be. That's why I sent Ogre on ahead. Vampire, Fly, and Mummy Man have been hanging around for days. This should put a buzz in their bunny. Dr. Dredd's Hideout Hotel can open for business. Uh, hideout Hotel, Dr. Dredd? Of course, you ninny! A luxurious hideout for the world's worst criminals. Who are even now on their way here to enjoy Dr. Dredd's hospitality. But enough chit-chat. We must prepare for their arrival. Are you positive the hotel is completely empty? Oh, yes, Dr. Dredd. Certainly. Yes, empty. Come in, Drag Pack, come in. Uh, wouldn't you know it? Never around when you need that. Hi, Big D. How 
a reunion going. Just relax and enjoy yourself, Unc. Everything's under control up here. That's because Dr. Dredd is out of control down here. Dr. Dredd? That's what I said. He and those monsters are scaring everybody to pieces. And we, the Spook, Spectres, and Spirit Society, is going to get played. It's ruining our reunion, not to mention our reputation. Don't worry, Vicky. We'll be there in no time. Proceed, Vampira. I'll make beautiful music, Dr. Dre. Beautiful, don't you think so, Toad? Toad, you clod, you're not listening. Oh, I, I like it, I like it. Bad Toad, bad Toad, pay attention. Phew, I needed that. All done. All done. 
die. Of course, this prison door. Perfect. Oh, that's fun. I want to try it. No, Toad. Push it open. Push it open. Close it. I thought the dread help. You jelly brain door jam. How many times have I told you to stick to toadying? And cease deranging my changes. Uh, why do we need all these changes, Master? Huh? Why? You insensitive bump. We want our esteemed guests to feel comfortable, don't we? My fraternity of felonious fellows will enjoy these homey touches that will spell success to my master plan. It occurs to me that we need some sort of master plan. Uh, yes, yes Dweck! Yes! Now, has anybody got one? <laughs> Why didn't I think of that before? Oh, yes, yes, Drake. Drake. Oh, yes. yes. Simple. The drag whack. We can't drag whack. We're stuck in the sand. Use your head. Yeah, we could use our heads. Frank, that is utterly ridiculous. Uh, but it's worth a try. All right, on the count of three. One, two, three. <laughs> Gosh, Howler, I got sand in my eye. Well, it beats water in your ears or brain even. Let's go. Make like a grunny. How? Keep running. Unlisted shell. Uh, hold on, I'll see if he's in. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, your three minutes are up. Short, but not sweet. Who was it, right? Who else? Dr. Dredd, setting up another dumb meeting at Hideout Hotel. <laughs> You know he picked the 13th floor. Of course, Lack. It's my lucky number. That's Drac, Dr. Bread. That's Dread. A name you'll remember well once my guests arrive. Who would be a guest at your crummy hotel? Surely you'll jest. Only the world's greatest safe trackers, bank robbers, pickpockets, you name it, super swindlers, charming charlatans, and once we join forces, we'll go on a crime spree unequated in history. We'll stop you, Dread. This time, you've gone too far. Speaking of going too far, try this. Oh no! Don't you much! It's not fair, Vampira! I serve you right! You'll just have to move faster to her, darling, and I suggest you start now! Your backhand matches your brain, Toad! Weak! his plan, is it? We'll stop him in his tracks. Oh, uh, won't we? Well, we certainly will. But first, we have to take care of those ogre uglies. Set for the kings of crime. Good job, mummy man. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Thank you. Let's see. The chairs. Up in the chairs. Five men for the table. Hey, mummy. Wanna see a trick? Trick? You wanna bet I can pull this cloth off the table without spilling anything? Watch. 
on numero uno. <gasps> Hold it! I think we've just located our next ugly. And there he is. I'll take care of him myself. My next <coughs> suggestion. Ah, uh, yes. The surf, the sun, and the sand. What could be more pleasant? How about a split? <coughs> What's this? <coughs> you won't turn out the light. <coughs> It's two down and one to go. And I'm gonna make sure she goes. My seagull disguise will do it. Using your head. You seem to have lost yours, Drek. No, just demonstrating the gravity of gravity. They're here. Now, where are those ogre loafers? I'll cut their salary for this. Uh, Dr. Dredd, you don't pay us any salary, remember? Who asked you, you bulbous bellhop? For that, you'll have to handle the luggage yourself. Now get off it. Yes, Master. Good talk. Good talk. Yikes. We're too late. The crooks have already arrived. Shh. Quiet. Welcome, crook. Ah, I mean, gentlemen. Welcome to the Hideout Hotel. Happy to see you. Just register your fingerprints. Wow! I don't believe it. There must be hundreds of hoods coming in. It's like a crook's convention. How are we gonna stop them? Convention? That's it. Good thinking, Frankie. Oh, don't mention it. What, what, what I say? Never mind. Just follow me. Oh, this is heavy. Uh, it put a stop to my heart. So when Frankie said convention, I thought of you and your buddies. Well, I got to admit, things have been a little dead at the reunion this year. Ghosts with gout, skeletons with aching joints, balding werewolves. Maybe this is just what the doctor ordered to liven things up. Then you'll do it? <clears throat> As president of the Transylvania Retired Spook Spectres and the... Uh, spirits? You said it, Spirit Society. I guarantee it. <laughs> It'll be a howling success. Oh. oh, it's glorious. Every major criminal in the world under my roof. They sure aren't major tippers. Racketeers, thieves, con men, my kind of people. Oh, the camaraderie. <coughs> Hotel desk, may I help you? What? A ghost ate your breakfast, but that's... Room 306, there's a skeleton in your closet. I don't understand. Yes? Your bed just floated out the window? Uh, oh, hold on. Hello? Room 521 reports a dragon in the bathtub? Oh, uh, Dr. Dredd, do we allow pets? <laughs> Can't be happening. There are no such thing as ghosts. Oh, I wouldn't say that. The <laughs> It's an unwanted hotel. Hurry, Dr. Dredd. Well, that does.
was it, Pac? Yeah. Case of clothes. But wait! Those crooks are escaping! Uh-oh. Oh, boy. I forgot about that. But I did. So I have to think of everything. Oh, boy. Kids to bed. You called the police? Who else? My fangs may be dull, but my brain, ha-ha, <laughs> sharp as a pack. Good point, Big B. But I'm sorry we had to spoil your reunion of weirdos and ghoul friends. Spoil? What spoil? We had them all. It was like old times. The whole thing we will go, the whole thing we will go. It was gloriously gruesome. with Kit on the pretend instrument panel. Here he comes. You can pretend Kit is talking, leading you to the enemy. Say they're behind the fence? Let's get him, Kit. He's gonna pass us. Yeah. The spin-out lever. Night Rider. Got us cool. One more, Kit. Go to Turbo. Night Rider. We got you. You're no match for Night Rider. Right, Kit? The Night Rider power cycle comes complete with spin-out lever. Your parents have to put it together. New from Coleco. If you want to hear music from a box like this, here's a high band blaster that you wear on your wrist. High band blaster. And would you look at this watch? Who would ever know? It can change into a robot radio. Robot radio. Carnivore non-radio watch is also available. Inviscipted Jet, Excalibur Gun, Scorpion, Autocron, Autoceptor, Kaltor, and the Robot Time Machine. Each sold separately. Hope you're still loving Drac Pack because we're going right into Groovy Ghoulies. Uh, we're going from Hanna Barbera to Filmation. Yeah, yeah, like the first one. Boom, Filmation. Uh, Groovy Ghoulies, man. Uh, connected with Sabrina the Teenage Witch. Um, yet again, Frankenstein, Dracula, Wolfman. I, I should say, Frankenstein's monster. My bad. I'm sorry. I know you guys, somebody's going to correct me, but it is Frankenstein's monster. So, here you guys go. This is Groovy Ghoulies. We're going to keep it going quick. Groovy Ghoulies episode is 123. That's the name of the episode, 123. So enjoy. Come on now, sing out. It's time for the Ghoulies get together. They got jokes for everyone. With laughter songs and fun. So let's go. is driving me batty! I sure needed that. <laughs> Dracula, what you grow in your gardens in Transylvania? Transplants? What else? <laughs> hey, Frankie, like, have you seen my shoebox, man? No. Well, here, like, watch. Uh. -roo -roo. Sabrina, did you ever hear the werewolf's curse? No, but if I did, I'd wash the mouths out with soap. Bella, what do you call a skyscraper for monsters? Oh, 
I don't know about sewing rats, so. The vampire state building. <laughs> you know, man, that joke should be taken out and buried. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't need that. Welcome to Horrible Hall. I am your host, Count Dracula. <laughs> I see by the old spookle clock that we're almost late for game time. Hey, little Drac, no hands. No brains either. You're driving me bats. Come on, Drac, baby. Man, I'll teach you how to hang ten. Keep calling me Drac, baby, and I'll hang ten on your nose. Golly, what a lovely evening. Frankie, where have you been? I've been out walking the vulture. Get in here and help me find a secret passage to the game room. Game room? Like out of sight. Game room? Goody. Hey, man, is that like the secret passage? It is now. Golly jeepers, what are all these things? My collection of playthings. Uh-oh. Hey, what does this baby do? This is one of my favorites. Great for taking the kinks out of your back. You see, you place one hand here and... Enough! Enough kinks are out! Golly, he's getting stretched all out of shape. Well, he does seem like a little uptight. Stop! I don't need a bat. I mean a bath. I mean a bat bath. Don't you worry, Drag. I'll stop it. Wow, a Rooney! A cat could get hurt around here. Not to mention bats. I mean bats. I mean. Hey, I'm splitting. A Rooney! Oh, there you are, Frankie. It's time to get into costume for Wolfie's play. Twill be a shocking performance. I needed that. Let's start the show. Frankie's coming tonight. The Ghouly Players present. Like the classic story, Little Red Riding Wolf. Cool. Starring me. Makeup. <laughs> you know, if this is bad, I'm gonna ask for my mummy back. <laughs> like curtain. Now, I'm Little Red Riding Wolf. Cool. And I'm taking a basket of cool goodies to my grandpa whenever suddenly... Oh, hello, Little Wolf. I feel so silly. Oh, gracious. What's in the basket? A bunch of goodies. I just love goodies. Oh, no. They're for my poor sick grandpa. Dum, de dum, dum. Oh, I must have those goodies. And I know a way to get them. <laughs> Who is it? It is me, Little Red Riding Wolf. I hate telling fibs. Come in, my dear. <gasps> You're not Red Riding Wolf. You bet your sweet nightshirt I'm not. <laughs> Ooh -hoo! This is twice as bad as I thought, you know. I'm gonna ask for double my money back. Hi, Gramps. Hello, my dear. Grandpa, what small, cool teeth you got. Uh-huh. The better to buy those goodies with, my dear. You tricked me. Those aren't goodies. They're baddies. Well, little Red Riding Wolf, like I always say, a penny saved is a penny earned. Like, what has that got to do with this story? Nothing. I just like saving pennies. Like, thanks.
make you a roo! Mmm, your performance deserves a great big <laughs> If you're hungry and you'd like something to eat There's a dish for you that can't be beat eating crackers in his crypt, and I'll show you a crummy mummy. <laughs> hey, Frankie, now where can the Loch Ness Monster be found? The Loch Ness Monster is so big, no one's ever lost it. I needed that. <laughs> hey, Ratso, what kind of a boat does a vampire sail? Uh, a blood vessel. What else? How can I get a part in a horror movie? First, you have to pass your scream test. <laughs> hey, Agatha, how do you tell time? I just look at my witch watch, silly. <laughs> hey, Ratso, how do you get into a locked cemetery? That's easy, Batso, with a skeleton key. I resemble that remark. <laughs> Sabrina? Would you like to see a real vampire coffin? I sure would. <coughs> oh, you know, my weird uncle drank a whole gallon of varnish. <coughs> what a beautiful finish. And now, dads, it's time for Wolfie's weather report. Tomorrow will be just perfect. 42 inches of snow followed by sunshine. Followed by scorching temperatures, followed by heavy rains. Followed by Dracula with a club. Oskit Corskit. 
How can I send a postcard to the ghost of the banner? Just write in care of the dead letter office. Dr. Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah? Yeah? What's the problem? I don't know. Lately, I'm just bone tired. Let's take a look. Open your mouth. Aha. Just as I thought, your tongue is coded. Um, I see a long ocean voyage. I see a stormy sea. I see a shipwreck. Golly, Jupiter, are you a medium? <laughs> no, I'm an extra long. Hey, Mummy, who is it that dashes through the woods starting forest fires? <laughs> Smokey the dragon. I say, Drac, what do you get when you cross a fat guy with a glacier? The abdominal snowman. It's time for Wolfie's tips on pets. With a little patience, like your pet can be taught to do all sorts of tricky tricks. Come on, boy, baby boy, jump, man, jump. And a boy. It is important to reward your pet when he does well. Here's a treat, Fido boy. Knowest thou that your pet can also be taught to mow the lawn? And trim the trees? Had a baby, Fido. Now, man, go fetch like the newspaper. Put me down, you, you fin kumpoop. One of these nights, Wolfie, one of these nights. Oh, man, that drat flies off at the slightest little thing. Well, so much for today's tips on pets, boys. Okay, Fido, back to your moat, boy. Oh, and one other thing. Be sure and keep your pet well fed. Hello. Time to tell it to Bella. If you're a boy or a ghoul with a problem, just tell it to Bella and she'll solve it. Hey, Bella, baby. I got a real bang-up hang-up. What's the problem, Wolfie? It is my wolf wagon. A roo! Each time I start it, when there's a full moon, like, dig what occurs. Hmm. The solution to that hairy problem is this. Take it to the garage once a week for a wash and set. <laughs> oh, baby, what a wigged out idea. Thank you, Bella. Hmm. Smells like Hagatha's cooking up something special. There's something missing from this batwing stew. Naturally, you left out the tumbleweed leaves. Leaping Lucifer, you're right. Luckily, I have some in my garden. Here we are, tumbleweed. I'll just take a sprig of it. Heavens to Hades. You tumbleweeds tumble right back here. My stew will boil over. What's the score? Tumbleweeds two, Hagata nothing. I know how to fix these silly sagebrush. Allie! Hop! <laughs> I tricked them. <laughs> ah, this ought to put some bounce in the stew. <laughs> Looks like old Drax really in a stew. Never mind that uncouth character. You promised I could ride this electric bicycle. Why, sure. On the roy. Here goes. Oh, 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 it's spinning so fast. Shucks. A little peddling is good for you. <laughs> What you doing, Waddle Roy? Exercising, you ruffians. A little peddling is good for you. 
then a lot of peddling ought to be great. Right, Ratso? Right, Ratso. Oh, <laughs> Only Roy sure does get around. <laughs> Yippee! Two points for our side. <laughs> uh oh. Wah! Mother! Ow! Ouch! Ow! No, oh, just as I said, a little paddling is good for you. Ho <laughs> ho! Today, the mummies and the puppies will play your request. What would you like to hear? Be still, my ghoulish heart. Be claws of you. Rhapsody in boob. <laughs> Spikes for the memory. You'll be glad to know they love you too 
on my signal, begin. Laser tag, the game that moves at the speed of light. From Worlds of Wonder, stadium not included. Gentlemen, turn on your lights. Slam Shark Camaro, Avenger Competition Mustang, Sabertooth Tiger Datsun CX. They're powered by your fist, and if you want to race in the dark, you turn on just one switch. Each sold separately, AAA battery not included. Lighted Slam Shifters, Slam Shark Camaro, Avenger Competition Mustang, Sabertooth Tiger Datsun CX. Each sold separately from Ideal. Hey, hope you liked this week's episode. Um, I hope you had fun. Um, I had a fun putting this episode together. Uh, oddly enough, given the fact that I was not good during the... What I got this. Um, this episode's been uh, setting mostly in the back, uh, except for my parts where I film. Uh, getting finished so I can bring it to you. So... I'm going to say yet again, thank you all. I appreciate every single one of you. Um, Robert, Tarek, Nufi, Nancy, uh, Abe, uh, Way Out Toys, um, uh, Matty Bot, uh, and Johnny. You guys are all great. Johnny. Dude, seriously, thank you. Uh, I think we're I think we're getting some we're gonna get some new equipment with that. Um, I'm I'm gonna probably invest in a new microphone. Uh, so thank you, thank you all so very much. Thank you for staying with me. Thank you for dealing with me being sick last week. I appreciate it. Um, just thank you all. Uh, you guys are all great. I can't, I can't say enough about you guys. You guys are all, um, yet again, like I said, when we went live to, to kind of talk to you guys for a little bit, uh, that was fun. Uh, maybe I can do that again, but I can schedule it, tell you guys I'll be here this time, be like on a Wednesday night or something. Boom, you guys come in and talk to me. Um, <clears throat> so, as always, though, Every Monday, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, Group Therapy TV Podcast. Every Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Saturday, or Saturday, Sci Fridays. Every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, Saturday morning serials. Um, you can always find me there. You can find me on the Monster Channel still. I'm still there every Saturday and Tuesday morning. Uh, with the old episodes, um, we did lose some episodes, so I've got to go pull them and re-edit and then put them back up. Uh, we got some some stuff taken off, so I will fix those and take care of it. So those episodes will be back, just shorter. Um, but man, like I said, I can't thank you guys enough. I appreciate the hell out of every one of you. Um, it's it. Uh, it sucked being sick. I apologize. Um, and I will see you guys all next Saturday, next Monday, next Saturday, Friday, whenever you watch. And keep putting down there, what was your favorite toy as a kid that you got for Christmas? Let me know. All through the month of December, we're going to have asked questions like that. So I want you guys all to take care, and I'll see you all there.